Good morning, ladies and germs. Got a fun, quick little project for us to do today. Isaac noticed the other day that the uh, right rear axle seal appears to have let go on the Crown Vic. So I'm going to do my best to kind of show the simple steps on replacing or repairing that axle seal. We need to get the wheels off. We've got it up on jack stands. So we need to get the wheels off. We need to get the rear differential cover off. And then we need to take the center pin out so that we can slide the axles out. We will have to take the calipers off as well. So I'm gonna get started on that, get these wheels off. Y'all don't need to see that. And I'll also cover the tools that will be needed. Let's get to it. I started to get ahead of myself like I normally do. So like I said before, we gotta get these. I already broke these loose, so I'm cheating a little bit. These two caliper bolts need to come out. Swing this caliper out of here, you gotta push this any rattle clip, at least I think that's what it is, down, and then it swings out like that. May have to take a little bit of brake clean to that inner brake pad, but it should survive to see another day. got to have your parking brake released to get the rotor off. I've already done that. This thing's also got hub centric rings on it. Covered in anti-seize. Oh yeah, that's a lot of gear oil in there. That stinks. We'll have to burn up a can of brake clean to get all this gear oil off of the parking brake, but it will work again. Oh, she needs a bearing. Damn it. That means it probably also needs an axle. Well, I guess we better get the other side off and see how it's doing, even though it's not leaking. She ate herself. This side's okay. I'm still gonna take it apart and look at it. One thing I forgot to mention on the intro of the video is you always wanna check your rear axle vent and make sure the hose isn't kinked or plugged. Uh, this one was severely deformed. I think uh, Panzer Platform had noticed it in a couple videos before. It wasn't plugged, it wasn't blocked, but it was definitely messed up. So I'm gonna make a new vent and we'll get that put on before we start driving it again. So I'm knocking the bolts out of the cover, the differential cover, using a half inch socket. And the old power ratchet. Always make sure to leave one of your top bolts in the cover before you go try to break the seal on this. That'll keep the cover from falling and having a nice gear oily mess. I'm just gonna tap this corner with the screwdriver. Just like that. The gear oil looks fine. 72,000 miles on this car. We'll still want to make sure we clean the bottom of the 
differential case out um, in case there's any metal in the bottom of it from that bearing. There's a bracket at the top of the cover. Gotta get that lifted up out of the way. And remember to put it back on. Okay, I gotta go knock the car into neutral and then we're gonna rotate the ring gear around until we can get to the center pin bolt. We'll pull that bolt out, center pin will come out. I know you can't see it very good from where you're at. So let's just do it. I should be like a pro and have some more light down here. Problem is, I'm not a pro. Okay, we're gonna do some real hack stuff here now. I'm just gonna pop that wrench with the old hammer. They did not want that to come out. It's got a bunch of Loctite on it, I can feel it. Okay. Can't run that out any further in that position or the ratchet's gonna get stuck. So I will go get a eight millimeter gear wrench. Fun fact, eight millimeter is exactly the same as five sixteenths. So this is our center pin right here. This is what allows the spider gears to spider. And it also retains the C-clips because a stock 8.8 .8 axle is a C-clip axle. We don't need to take this center pin bolt all the way out. That can just stay there. So right here is our C-clip. Here's the C-clip. So we're gonna go push in on the axle to release the C-clip. So of course the battery died on me right when I was taking the clip out. This is the C-clip. So you wanna rotate this clip around. I rotate it this way and then I tap on the ends with a screwdriver and shove it off the axle. So now that that C-clip is out, we can slide the axle out. Try not to knock the uh, spider gears out of the carrier. Just leave them be. That way you don't lose any of the uh, special washers for them. You will have to line those back up with the hole in the carrier for the uh, center pin when it goes back together. Okay, this is gonna be the grand unveiling so we can see how bad this axle is. A lot of times when it eats an axle bearing, the axle doesn't fare so well. Because on these it's an open bearing, so the inner race is the axle. Yep, the axle's junk. I don't know if you can see how deep that is, but it's got to be a good 30 thousandths deep. So, looks like I'm heading to the parts house to get an axle. Thankfully, our local AutoZone has one in stock. I actually pre looked. Uh -huh. 
the bearing doesn't look too bad. I'm gonna replace it, of course, but I expected that bearing to be really ground down to nothing. So on the 8.8s, we do have to take the backing plate loose to expose the seal and the bearing. I'm thinking these are probably halves or 12s. Or 13s. Or 9s. It's been a minute since I've worked on an 8.8. .8. I'm trying to remember if they're a hodgepodge of American and metric. flag nuts on the back side. This is a flag nut. This is what's retaining these bolts. ABS sensor is covered in metal. So, I'm sitting here contemplating what I'm going to do with the other side. And the more that I think about it, the more I think I'm just going to let sleeping dogs lie. And we're just going to fix this side. I'm going to have to go get a slide hammer for my 8.8 bearing extractor tool. Now I'm just taking the seal out. All right, I'm gonna go get an axle and a slide hammer because you do have to have a slide hammer to get that bearing out. I finished chiseling that seal out. They can be pretty stubborn. It's hard to get a real steep angle behind that seal so it wants to cave in on itself instead of coming out. So this is my homemade puller that I made about 10 years ago for doing eight eights, for getting the bearings out. Uses one of these style collets. Then you just thread that in, it expands. The tricky part is getting it, getting it put in to the bearing. Gotta get him in place. Come on. I got the puller set in there. That piece that I'm using to pull the bearing is part of an old hard steel uh, combination wrench body. Okay. Got that ready to go. Puller on there. This is a uh, Harbor Freight, pretty light duty Pittsburgh puller. We'll see if it has enough oomph to get this bearing out. I am going to take a little bit of a propane torch here and put a little heat in the housing.
Okay, here we go. I have to put a bigger slide hammer on here. Nope, oh, she's coming. Very tight. Thankfully, most of the metal is piled up right here at the end of the tube. Well, I just spent the last 20 minutes swabbing out the axle tube. Probably won't be able to see down in there. It was full of metal. So I used a couple different rags and my pry bar metal wash brush handle and then finally a magnet with a shop towel zip tied to the end of it and then I ran the magnet with no towel on it around the bearing several times the inner carrier bearing well I guess it would just be the carrier bearing but anyways so now that that's all cleaned up you really want to if you have an axle failure like this you really want to try and get as much of that metal out of the axle as possible out of the housing so I'll still clean out the differential portion of the housing and uh, before we fill it back up with oil. So I got to get the bearing and the axle and the seal out of the box and then get the parking brake cleaned up with some trusty aerosol brake cleaner and uh, we'll be almost ready to start going back together with this guy. Use some weird tape in India. Seal and bearing surface looks really nice. Rest of it looks proper. And I just realized the radio is playing during all of this. So we'll be starting over. So this is our new axle. Looks to be a pretty good build quality from what I can see. The seal surface and the uh, bearing surface look great, very nice made by USA Standard Gear which is kind of ironic because I'm pretty sure that it's made in India maybe India is slightly better than China I don't know got a new coil bearing that surprised me quite a bit USA this is your tone ring for the ABS sensor we got to put that on and then comes with a seal. I don't know what brand of seal it is. It looks very much like a national seal. I could probably look that part number up and tell, but I'm not worried about it. Gives you, they give you five new studs covered in dog hair. They even give you five factory style lug nuts, which we won't be using. So the next big task is I need to get the studs put in the axle and then I need to get the bearing and seal put in. So let's work on that. All right, little update. Try and make this quick because most people aren't here for putting the axle together. Yes, you could just go down to a wrecking yard and probably find one of these, maybe. Um, but I did get the, the uh, studs pushed in the new axle. And uh, what I ended up doing was using a socket. Put the socket on with the drive end over the studs to kind of center it up. And then basically I smashed this together with my bench, bench vise. 
my own poor man's press into pressing the studs in. And then the ABS ring, I literally just tap that on with the hammer and a brass drift and just walked it around until it was fully down seated. It's not super tight, but it's tight enough that it ain't gonna fall off of there. It's 90 degrees out. It's pretty damn hot. Probably not gonna finish this today because I just don't wanna. But I do wanna get the bearing pounded in, get the seal pounded in, and uh, possibly put the backing plate back on and slide the axle in. Then that'll probably be it for today. So if the lighting will cooperate, let's see if we can get this bearing put in and not overheat the camera. I don't have a bearing install kit here so I'm gonna be using like an inch and a half socket and I'm gonna heat the hell out of the tube with the uh, little torch over there and then I've got the bearing has been in the freezer for like two hours and I put a little film of high temp wheel bearing grease in here just to uh, help that bearing go in and grease won't run away from the heat as much when I take the torch to it. Probably getting pretty good. The bearing's frosting over. Okay, that should be in. That went in very nice. Still very hot. All right, that's finally in there. And I didn't even dent the hell out of it too badly. A few little Mars on it, but not too bad. And it's still round. I'm gonna put a little bit of grease on the lip of the seal before we put the axle in. Goes without saying, you got to put the backing plate back on before you put the axle in, or you're going to be taking stuff back apart again. Okay, and when you go to slide your axle in, don't just drag the axle down the bearing and the seal. You need to actually kind of hold it up and support it as it goes in. Otherwise, you could tear this stuff up pretty easily. But I gotta wash the backing plate and the park brake assembly. It's still covered in gear oil. And then we'll put that back in and we'll go over the rest of the process. Okay, we're ready to slide the axle in. 
Got the backing plate washed, got the brake shoes for the parking brake washed off. These are tightened down to very tight. However tight you can get with a 3 8 ratchet. These bolts don't hold the wheel on, so don't get caught up in that. All they do is hold the, the uh, brake caliper bracket. They're plenty tight. All right, here we go. So I'm just lifting up on the axle so that it's not totally dragging through the seal. I'll make sure I don't knock the spider gears out. We are engaged, like we're getting married. I think I'm going to get the uh, rotor washed and get the caliper put back on and make sure those pads aren't wet. I don't think they're wet. They don't look like they're wet. But we'll degrease them anyways. Yeah, we're coming along. All right, now that our axle is slid back in, we can try and get the C-clip back into the axle. All right, epic failure on my part, and it's all fixed. I didn't have the ABS ring seated all the way. It was even, but not seated all the way, and that will keep the axle from going all the way in. So here's our C-clip. I'm gonna put it back on the way it was. So the rounded side of it versus the sharp side. The sharp side is gonna go away from the axle. Should be in. I'm gonna go pull out on the axle. I gotta stop with the epic fails today. Okay, now we can put the cross pin back in. We're gonna go until the battery dies. So when you slide your cross pin in, try and line the hole up as best you can so that you can hopefully get the bolt in on the first try. Very hot and very tired. Okay, I'm not going to put any more Loctite on that bolt because there's already a bunch of factory Loctite on there. So once that cross pin is in, the C-clip cannot fall out. It is impossible unless you break an axle. All right, we got our caliper back on. These two bolts are tightened back up. Tight, but not too tight. 
I always try and put the torque specs on the video screen, so I will try and do that this time. Brake pads are washed off with brake cleaner. Rotor is washed off with brake cleaner. And um, I think we're ready to put the cover back on. Then we can be done with this project and go have adult beverages to melt our body pains away. These two scallops and an 8.8 .8 cover always go on the bottom. Let's grab a couple of bolts here. Let's see if I can not put the cover in the silicone until it's where I want it. These covers don't use a gasket, they use silicone as a gasket. Barely touching. Okay, we gotta put our bracket back on the top side here, like that. I don't know if y'all can see that little bracket. Here's your axle ID tag. He is now going to go in a different spot because I wasn't paying attention. He'll be just fine right there. Does anybody know what this little hard plastic thing is for on a Crown Vic? Mustangs don't have that. At least none of mine did. Oh, we're so close, I can taste it. I'm not gonna fill the gear oil up until the morning. I'll let this dry overnight. I think the quickest I've ever put gear oil on silicone was probably about two hours, and I don't think I ever had it leak. But if you can wait overnight, this car's not going anywhere, so that's always better. I don't really have a pattern that I use. Just kind of bounce around like putting a wheel on. Okay, now I'm just gonna go around and give them a little crank. That's it. You'll feel it bottom out on the case. I totally almost forgot to show you guys where the fill plug is at. On an 8.8, .8, the fill plug is on the front of the case, up towards the pinion. So I'll get this broke loose, and then uh, we're gonna fill this up until it just pours out of the hole and then jam the plug back in there. I always recommend you buy three quarts and have a little bit of extra. Okay, that's pretty well got this job done as far as the camera's concerned. If you all made it through this long ass video, you have uh, been awarded the Troopers of Boredom Award. And uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, go ahead and put them down in the comments below. And uh, on that note, I'm gonna go cleaned up, take a shower, and we'll see you on the next one.